Hello and welcome to another CNM Herb Walk. We're here at the very cusp between winter and spring. It's called Primrose though because it's the Prima Rosa, the first flower, the first rose or flower to come out in the spring. One thing it does extremely well is to prepare the terrain of your body, to improve the terrain so that your immune system can work better. On the medicinal side, it is a vulnerary, so it helps with wound healing. Drop it in a glass, top it up with water and leave it for 24 hours. The next day, you'll have a really refreshing but very cleansing drink. They say that when the, uh, the last ice age went away and the glaciers receded, the silver birch was one of the first plants, first trees to recolonize. So it symbolizes new beginnings. As I've said before, the wonderful thing about being a herbalist is it really puts you in touch with natural cycles. And we observe this nowhere better than in looking at the plants and their life cycles themselves. So what we've got here, we're a few days past the equinox here. So we literally are on the cusp between winter and spring and we can see it reflected in the environment around us here. So we've almost, we've got evidence of winter just past, a few dead leaves here and there. But as you can see alongside that, in this uh, hazel tree here, we've got the buds just starting to open as well. A week or so from now, all of this will be greened up. But right now, we can see that magical time between the seasons. And that actually brings me to wanting to talk about the particular benefits of plant medicine at this time of year, because we're moving out of a season of uh, reflection, if you like, of uh, being a little bit internalized. You know, the weather's not been so clement. We've all been inside a lot. Um, and we've all been eating foods that maybe are quite uh, heavy, sustaining, lots of carbohydrates, fats, etc., to get us through the winter. And now as we move into the warmer and lighter weather, what we want really is to start clearing away some of the stuff that might have accumulated over that time. Carbohydrates particularly tend to leave residues which the body needs to clear out. And it so happens, of course, that in the spring, we find the plants that are just starting to come up around now uh, can help us to do that. So we're going to be looking out for that theme particularly today as we walk through uh, this wonderful area in Sussex, England. So if you're new to this channel, please like this video and subscribe to our page in order to keep updated with our future releases. So let's go and see what we can find. Now this will be a familiar sight to any of you walking around at this time of the year in the English countryside. This is the common English primrose, Primula vulgaris. It actually has nothing to do with the rose family, by the way. It has its own botanical family, it's the Primulaceae. It's called primrose though because it's the Prima Rosa, the first flower, the first rose or flower to come out in the spring, one of the very early spring flowers. Now we're looking at obviously our theme of uh, cleansing and uh, kind of moving from the, the, the winter into the spring and it turns out that this plant has a few characteristics that are useful in that regard as well. In particular it's a good expectorant so it helps to remove phlegm from the lungs and it does that because it has a fairly high content of saponins which are soap-like chemicals that irritate the mucous linings so that they contract and, and expel uh, debris. So one of the things that we want to do after a long winter of maybe eating foods that are quite uh, mucus forming, phlegm forming, is to get that stuff out of the system. It's a good uh, nutritional plant actually as well and the, the young leaves, we've got a, this, these are fairly young plants here, um, coming up here for example, are good to as a garnishes for salad. They have a, a mild, slightly sweet taste, quite pleasant. And the flowers are traditionally used in wine making as well. Um, other medicinal benefits of this plant include that it is a quite a good anti-inflammatory and analgesic, so it helps with pain relief, particularly in rheumatic and arthritic pain. So again, it has that quality that we may call in, in herbal medicine analgesic, but also maybe slightly alterative as well, having a slight diuretic property there, uh, helping to get the acids again out of the body and relieve those types of problems. And another one of the virtues of this plant is its antispasmodic, 
nervine properties. So it's a, a mild sedative, can be added, for example, to mixes to calm the nerves. Uh, the uh, Renaissance herbalist John Gerard actually cited it for the treatment of what he called frenzy, uh, especially in the spring. And what he meant by that was anybody who tends to get a little bit too up, a little bit too uh, manic, if you like. So hysteria, uh, hyper nervous, hyper um, excitable states. Now, all that might sound innocent enough, but it turns out this plant can pack something of a punch as well. If you take too much of it, it can act as an emetic, so it'll make you sick. Um, the root, particularly, is quite powerful as a purgative. So, in other words, that means it'll get the stuff out of you whichever way it chooses to come, and it can be a little bit unpredictable. So, a very well-known and popular English herb, which you'll already be familiar with, but turns out that it has quite a lot of virtues to extend in terms of herbal medicine as well. So one of the most important medicinal plants to start showing itself at this time of year, of course, is the actually not so humble stinging nettle, Urtica dioica. All round general tonic, but particularly good for clearing the acidic wastes out of the body. You remember that we've just been through winter, we've been eating a lot of root vegetables and maybe worse in order to get us through and sustain our energy levels. And so uh, this time of year, it opening up the eliminative channels, but also converting all that stuff to uh, into a form in which it can be easily eliminated, particularly, of course, by the urinary tract. And actually, this plant has uh, a lot to do with the urinary tract in other ways as well. Um, the seeds of the plant are considered to be an excellent kidney restorative, and the root, of course, is very good for benign prostatic hyperplasia in older gentlemen. But there's other things about this plant that are really worth noting. Um, look at the location here. We're on the edge of a wood and there are nettles kind of lining the perimeter of this wood and they tend to do that. It's almost as though they're standing on guard. They are, of course, also traditionally associated with Roman centurions and although uh, the theory that the Romans brought them into England in order to um, help them through the winter months here particularly, that theory has been pretty much debunked. But the story that I really like is the fact that they used to use the stinging nettle to flay themselves with in order to bring the circulation up uh, against the cold and inclement weather, which of course was very much in contrast to where they came from. But they have that kind of, um, you know, I think the affinity with the, with the centurion uh, is particularly evocative, particularly because they seem to sort of be standing guard. Sometimes you can find these things circular, uh, in, encircling a tree, for example. We have a, a, an oak tree that I visited recently in Somerset, completely surrounded by a ring of nettles, just outside the footprint of the tree as well. So not close up to it, but just almost as though they're protecting it. So it may or may not have specific antiviral properties, but one thing it does extremely well is to prepare the terrain of your body, to improve the terrain so that your immune system can work better. And it does this in two ways. Firstly, by virtue of the fact that it's a very, very good cleanser, blood cleanser and lymph cleanser, but also because it's a nutritive tonic. It has bucket loads of the kind of nutrients that we need to support the body when it really needs to be functioning at its best. So here we have another spring plant that's very easy to find. Some would say too easy to find. It is one of those plants, like a lot of medicinal plants actually, um, they tend to be very successful species and that's perhaps how they can help us to be successful species too, by looking after our health in particular ways. And this one, like many others, is considered to be a sort of noxious invader by many gardeners. But it has so much going for it. This is Lamium purpureum, purple dead nettle, also by the way called purple archangel. And it has both medicinal and nutritive properties. 
On the medicinal side, it is a vulnerary, so it helps with wound healing, antiseptic, astringent, all of which qualities are also very useful for wound healing. But it also has cleansing and detoxifying properties, diuretic, diaphoretic, which means it makes you sweat, um, and also laxative as well. And actually one of the things you can do with this plant is to make a detox tea out of it, because when we're preparing a detox tea, very often we put you know, a load of different herbs in for various detoxification reactions. This one will pretty much do it all. Um, so you do have to be a little bit careful with it though, because it does have quite a strong laxative effect. Now the name, of course, purple dead nettle, um, don't um, confuse it with the stinging nettle. It's not even the same botanical family. It's actually a member of the mint family, Lamium uh, from the Lamiaceae. And you can tell that actually if you look very, very close, because the, the section of the, uh, of the stem of the plant here is actually square. And this is a characteristic of mint family plants. Like many mint family plants, it also has um, culinary usage as well. It's not terribly nice to eat raw because the leaves are a bit furry, but it can be prepared as a vegetable, pretty much the same way that you might prepare spinach or even nettle, of course. So it has many things in common with nettle, actually. One of them is that it's an antihistamine, so it can help with seasonal allergies. But besides that, it also contains a wealth of vitamins and minerals. It has vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin K, magnesium, manganese, and the seeds actually contain uh, an oil that has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties for us as well. So um, again, a plant that's very humble, um, doesn't look much when you see it, uh, but actually very, very useful plant indeed. Um, you can actually chop it up and put it in salads if you want. Um, you can make teas out, it makes quite a nice uh, uh, refreshing tea on a hot spring day or a warm spring day as well. Um, and it's a lovely little plant actually. Um, so if you see it, you know, take care of it. Um, let it. Let it spread a little bit so that you get enough to be useful. So let's see what else we can find in our quest for spring detoxifiers. So I've been particularly looking out for some of this and we found some eventually. It's just starting to come up in the hedgerows here. It's a little bit difficult to get at because it tends to like those kind of out of the way little spaces, but it will grow in profusion as the season goes on within the next week or two, I would think. This is cleavers, Latin, Gallium apparini, uh, otherwise known as sticky willy or bed straw. Um, sticky willy because you probably know this plant. I mean, if you've got any wild areas in your garden, you will have seen it. Uh, it's a low lying or as we say, prostrate herb, nothing to do with the prostate, by the way. Um, uh, and, it, and it kind of likes to hug the ground, but it does kind of grow. And the reason it's called bed straw is because it kind of, when it grows in profusion, it almost makes a kind of a mattress and you're actually quite comfortable to lie in. Uh, but it's called sticky willy or cleavers because it cleaves to you because of the tiny little hairs and tiny little spikes on the stalk and the hairs on the leaves. And you can actually, even on my skin, if I just pull it like that, it's trying to grip onto me. Uh, and that, of course, is how it propagates itself partly as well. It, it attaches itself to passing uh, people, animals, etc., uh, and gets to move around the place. Now, this is one of our best spring tonics, and it's really easy to make as well. Um, the best way to prepare cleavers is actually to do it fresh in a glass of cold water, just literally, uh, maybe just rub the, uh, a couple of sprigs of this between your palms very, very gently, drop it in a glass, top it up with water and leave it for 24 hours. The next day, you'll have a really refreshing but very cleansing drink. Don't use too much of it because it is quite a powerful cleanser actually. And it, although again, it looks so almost innocent and so unassuming, uh, but this plant has some pretty powerful capabilities, particularly in shifting lymph. So cleansing and moving the lymph system is its speciality. And because the lymph system doesn't actually have an exit route, it has to go through another channel, in, in this case, the urinary uh, channel, Clavers is also a diuretic, so it will help to remove all the waste that it removes from the lymph, uh, finally eliminates through the urinary system. 
So um, the other thing about cleavers actually is that um, it has antiseptic properties too. Um, I'll tell you a little story about it. Um, I, once, I don't go to doctors hardly at all, but there was an occasion, maybe a couple of decades ago, I can't even remember actually, last time I went actually, um, and I'd, had, I'd picked up an earache, which I suspected was to do with something I picked up in a swimming pool, which is not uncommon, and I was failing to deal with it with anything else. So I actually went to the doctor and said, I want to know what this is, because once I know what it is, I can treat it. Um, she got interested, by the way, and started asking me about what we did, and we had a, a really good conversation in the end um, about herbal medicine which she didn't know much about but uh, she, she did the test and she found out that the organism that was causing the ear problem the ear infection was a pseudomonas a particularly nasty bacteria uh, it usually grows compost heaps and not very clean places and actually one of the most common things to pick up in public swimming baths scarily enough um, so once I knew that what that what it was I had read somewhere that um, cleavers could deal with pseudomonas so I prepared um, a, an infused oil of uh, cleavers fresh cleavers herb and put a few drops in uh, I always do both ears by the way in case of cross infection put a few drops in my ears and within maybe three or four days that whole problem was uh, was cured so a really, really nice spring cleanser. Of course, you can tincture it. You can make teas out of it. Um, and obviously, there are ways to dry it and prepare it so that you can keep it for the year round. But I think it comes into its own in the spring. It is a spring plant. It'll be out in profusion fairly shortly. And uh, I guess the season lasts something like three or four weeks before it then starts to die back. It'll get these little tiny, we, this, this one's not flowering yet, but um, it, it, on the, the apex of the stem there, it will develop these little star-shaped, little white star-shaped flowers as well. At that point, uh, it's almost too late to harvest it. You want to get it when it's kind of vigorously growing up like it is at the moment. I said we're on the very brink of, of, um, of that growth season at the moment. So this one is a, is a young one, as they say. Delighted to find this beautiful young silver birch, Betulina pendulus. And we've seen quite a lot of birch today actually, but it was always the wrong variety. We've had yellow birch, paper birch, grey birch, um, and finally we find uh, silver birch. Now silver birch has a very special place in the folklore of this country. They say that when the, uh, the last ice age went away and the glaciers receded, the silver birch was one of the first plants, first trees to recolonize uh, the area. So it symbolizes new beginnings and that's really a big theme with the birch. Now I mentioned earlier that we'd just come out just a few days out of the um, equinox and the equinox in the Celtic calendar is the beginning of the year. It's the time when actually we lay the seeds by setting our intentions for the year ahead. So it's all about new beginnings, purification and going forward into the new year without the baggage of the old and that's very much part of the symbolism of silver birch. So you might expect, and it's certainly true, that we have some sort of cleansing and purifying action medicinally here too and indeed we do. It's all about the urinary tract this one and as such of course not just promoting urination and promoting the elimination of waste through the urine but also those conditions that depend on healthy urination and complete elimination to, uh, to improve them, like arthritis and rheumatism, which are very much about the build-up of acidic waste products in the body. In addition to that, it makes a very, very good analgesic as well. In other words, it's a, it's a good pain relief for rheumatic problems, arthritic problems, back pain in particular. You can make actually a good massage oil out of silver birch and it's really, really soothing and uh, analgesic properties which make it such a good choice actually for a, for, a, for a healing massage for anybody suffering with those problems. Now, in the spirit of the Celtic uh, calendar, of course, we also have coming up fairly shortly we have the festival of Beltane now that's May Day basically and uh, it's often thought that the Queen of the May is Hawthorne a plant we've seen before and we'll see again but actually the maypole in the May Day celebrations was very often made out of the silver birch 
So this is a, a, a very familiar tree, a beautiful tree. You can't miss it. I was talking on the way up and I was saying, no, that's not silver birch, it's not silver enough. And when you see one uh, in its full glory, you can tell it's something completely different. So this is a, a real pleasure and an honor to have found this particular tree. Hi guys, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel for regular updates on our forthcoming releases. And if you have any comments, questions, or even ideas for additional herbs that we might seek out and cover on these herb walks, please do pop them in the comments. We'd be delighted to hear from you.